so I can um, be a little more animated. Um, I, you know, when I was asked to speak, I, I, I'm kind of nervous because, you know, when you hear speeches out there, they're like reading the, thank you for coming to whatever, whatever, you know, that's hard for me to write. So because I love this college and I really want to tell you something, I really want to be able to speak from the heart. So um, I, my name is Candace Meehan. I came to Long Beach City College, I believe, in 2000. Um, when I, I'm just going to try to be as brief as I can because we have a little bit of time. But uh, I uh, got an eye disease. I went to Wilson High School. And I got an eye disease which caused my eyes to bleed when I was in about 10th or 11th grade. And at the time, I was a straight-A student. And I was, you know, I wasn't involved in anything, but I was a pretty good girl at the time, I would say. Um, you know, because I don't know. And after that, I don't know. Um, but after the eye disease hit, um, I had a teacher at Wilson, a chemistry teacher, and I remember that teacher, I was sick, like I, I kept getting laser surgeries, I couldn't see, literally couldn't see, it was black in front of me. And I told the teacher, I need to make up my work, whatever that may be. And he said to me, just looked me in the face and just said, I don't know why you're failing, you're gonna fail the class, like whether you make it up or not. And in my mind at that moment, I said, you know what, he's right. This guy is right. I'm gonna fail this class, I'm gonna make up this work and I'm gonna waste my time. So why would I do that? So I called my dad and told him I'm, I'm, I'm going home. So um, he picked me up and I got, kinda got kicked out of there. And that's the last time I went to school, well, high school. Um, before I keep going, I do wanna make a disclaimer. I have my flip flops on today. <laughs> I had some really cute shoes on a minute ago, but I was in a car accident on Friday night. So my car that I just bought may be totaled. My ankle hurts really bad, so I just, because somebody said, they're not looking at your shoes. Well, they might be. In case you are, I do have heels, but they're in the car now. Um, but let me go back to my story. So when I was in high school, I ended up dropping out in the beginning of the 11th grade. I started getting involved in illegal activities, started banging on the street, acting like I was stupid, selling drugs for the OGs on the corner, just being stupid for no reason. Um, I didn't care. I didn't have anything. 
was I was going to be blind. I was going in and out of um, you know, my eye disease. Nobody cared. My parents were getting a divorce at the time, so why should I care? So I hung out and did that for a while until one day they had a drive by over there in the hood, and I'm not from the hood, so that kind of shocked me. And I remember the bullets flying everywhere, and I said, I'm not doing this. It's not cool to kick it in the hood, not if you're gonna get shot up for no reason. So I stopped doing that. Um, and my dad was in the Philippines at the time, I think it was 15 or 16. He was in the Philippines, and he ended up dying over there. And I never got to see him again. So um, right after he died, I told myself, I need to go back to school. I got to stop playing around here. I need to go back to school. And I ended up at Long Beach City College, which was the best experience, the best thing that could have ever happened to me in my entire life. When I got to Long Beach City College, I first worked in the job placement services. But then I was very fortunate to meet Anita Gibbons, who is my angel, my everything. And at the time, um, when I started working there for her, um, I was real like, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but I would come to work in my tank top with my tattoos hanging out and just, you know, something like that. And she would never like say anything, but she started taking me out to places like women's like stuff and you know, just different events and then getting involved in stuff and then I started learning how to be a woman. And it's hard in our society today to teach our kids how to do that because we're not getting it at home. So um, we did that. Like she said, I got involved. I was on ASB several semesters. You know, Derek, if he's out there, I, I, I think when he first got there, I was there. And I was the AWS president, I was cultural affairs president, PCC. One thing that I just want to tell you about in student leadership, if you're not already involved, that kept me here. It gave me a purpose, it gave me something to do, it gave me something to look forward to, and um, it just kept me going so that I wouldn't quit because sometimes we feel like quitting every single day. Trust me, I know. Um, so that kept me hooked into the college. I was involved, like she said, in everything that I could get my mind into. All of the skills that I learned and the career that I do now, I learned here at Long Beach City College. I did go on to get a bachelor's degree in sociology and then a master's degree. I wanted to work with students because I wish somebody in high school would have said, hey, you're a straight A student, why are you dropping out? Or what's going on with you? So all my kids, you see them in the front, I've been at Jordan High School for nine years. These students are in my leadership program. And we do a different approach to working with our students, youth development, true youth development. And that's caring about them. You guys know I love you. And that is not about this program. And that's something I learned here at this college was how to give back, how to be a great boss. I think I'm a good boss, am I? You better say yes. <laughs> But I have a team of staff that have gone through my program, students in my program who I've hired, who are the most amazing staff you could ever have. And I'm so grateful for that. But those are students we taught, you know, skills. Skills that I learned here that I've applied now to Jordan High School. Our entire leadership model at that school is modeled after this school's student government program. I wouldn't have learned that if I didn't get involved. So. Um, what else do I, I just want, there's about 10 minutes, but I just want to really talk to you today about purpose. And what do I mean by that? I mean, most of all of you are probably, every, who's a student here? Long Beach City College, great. Yeah, all of you, right? Probably, that's why you're here. Um, so, as a student, you got to have a reason to be here. It can't be so for some of my younger students, and I'm talking to you guys too, when you guys get in school, it can't be for your parents. It can't be because you ain't got nothing else to do, surely. 
It has to be because you want to do something with your life, because you want to change your life, because you want to be something better than what you are right now. You have to want this education for you because then you'll make it. Those people that are there, be here or there, if you're in school because you know your parents or you feel like you have to or maybe you do have to or you'll get kicked out or something. Um, you know, if you're, if you're not creating a purpose, what is it? Why are you here right now? Some of, who, who wants to say, I don't know? How many people say, I don't know? None of you? Because that a whole room full of people know why they're here? That's what you're saying. You're here to get an education, but you're here for something greater than what you are today. I never thought I was going to make it. You can ask Anita. I was like, I'm not getting out of here. It took me six years to get out of Long Beach City College. I couldn't figure it out. It took me 10 years to get a master's degree, but you know what? I made it. I made it because every single day I fought through. There, there's times, there's students, right now I have alumni students from Jordan. Some of them try to, the statistics of these kids here going straight to college is high dropping out. You get overwhelmed, you can't do it. There's too much crap going on in your life. Whatever that may be, high, high statistics. They don't find their way. That's why it's so important for you to find out why you're here. Why are you continuing? I always say to my kids and, and to other people, when I was here as an employee, I would tell these students, if you take one or two classes, that's it, you're gonna make it in 10 years. But if you give up, go away, come back, you just wasted how many years of your life when you could have almost been done? 10 years I sat up around trying to go to school. One class, two class, three class. 10 years later, I'm standing here today because I made it. So, you know, those nights that you're studying, even for you guys, trying to graduate, those nights that you're studying, those, that time that you're just like, everything around you is crumbling. Your education is all you have, unless you want to sit up in McDonald's all day. You don't want that. So, I encourage you today to find what your purpose is. I encourage you today to think about what you're doing this for. I encourage you today to think about your goals. Where do you want to be? One thing that I always did was I, I looked at what my goals, where will I be in 10 years? And you know what? I plugged away at that for 10 years. And I'm there. So sitting down there writing your goals and trying to get yourself established and thinking about what your future is. Some people say, I live for today. I live for today too, after that car accident. I don't know, I could have been killed in the, that the, last week and not have been standing here today, but God has a purpose for me. And that purpose was to be here to talk to you today, to tell you, keep going. Don't let these people get you down. Don't let the system, sometimes the system can be ugly and, and knock you off your rock. You gotta stay on that rock because you gotta keep going. I can be so, right now I'm in pain. My back hurts, my neck hurts, everything hurts. I haven't taken my drugs because I wanted to be alert here for you today. So I'm not high, but um, I would like to be. But, <laughs> you know, for the most part, there was a young lady I spoke to today who, who we, we even had some tears because I felt like, sometimes I feel like God puts me in, and I'm not bringing God into this because this is not a, this is an education system. But I believe in God, I believe in purpose, and I believe everything happens for a reason in time. I'm grateful for this today. You don't know where you're gonna be tomorrow. You don't know what's gonna happen to you tomorrow. That's why today you work hard and you live in this moment, true indeed. But keep your goals on your mind. Where will you be in 10 years? Because eventually you're gonna get there. The last thing that I just wanna say um, besides don't give up is, I have a little poem, if we can pass the, the poem out to you. This is a poem that I remember we had one of our banquets here. And I want to say at PCC, this was something that, a poem that we read all the time. And we're going to pass this poem out. I know some of you know this poem, but we pass this poem out and say it at every single banquet at Jordan High School. Um, I've been there nine years, and we, we make sure we read it every time. This is the starfish poem. 
Who knows the starfish poem? Yeah, let me see one. I want to read it to you. So it's coming out. I just want this to be your motivation because besides helping yourself, you are here probably to help others in your path and in your journey. All of us are. Today, your presence today tells me that you care about yourself and others, so this may apply to you. It just says making a difference, because we have a lot of student leaders here, both from Long Beach City College, from Jordan High School, some of you who are not involved yet, if you're not involved, again, I encourage you to do so. It says, an old man walked up a shore littered with thousands of starfish, beached and dying after a storm. A young man was picking them up and flinging them back into the ocean. Why do you bother? The old man scoffed. You're not saving enough to make a difference. The young man picked up another starfish and sent it spinning back into the water. He said, made a difference for that one. So I just want you to know that you make a difference every single day, if it be for you or for others. God has blessed you to be here today. God has a purpose for you. You have a purpose for you. And I just ask, and I will pray for you all, but I ask that you just keep going. Don't lose the faith. You're going to be so amazing in whatever you do, and I can't wait to see you do that. Thank you, guys.